Hello, I am your everyday average Jonathan. Join me this week while I turn this and this into this, a dark twisted scabbard for a dread warlord's blade. Hello, I am your everyday average Jonathan. I'm an ordinary guy with ordinary tools making extraordinary items. This week we have a little bit of a switcheroo on what I was planning to do. I was planning to release the build video for the horse head armor that I had made, but the plain truth is I wasn't able to finish that project. The help that I had and that I needed to hold my horse's head still for me to fit this on and try different attachment measures has left. So I need to postpone that project for probably just one more week until I get some help mounting that horse head armor on my horse. But I hope that's okay because this week instead what we're going to do is make a scabbard for the Morgul blade, the short sword or dagger that I made my mother last year. I'm recovering from being a little bit sick. I'm losing my voice. So without further ado, let's get to the shop and get started. Growing up, my mother and father introduced us to the the world of fantasy, the the stories of Narnia from C.S. Lewis, the stories of the Lord of the Rings from J.R.R. Tolkien. She is largely responsible for reading us these stories when we were very young and then helping our creative minds stay uh, afloat in the fantasy realm, if you will, as we were growing up uh, through through our teenage years. Last year, I made for her a blade, which which is interesting because my mother, I wouldn't say that she has very much <laughs> what I would say darkness in her at all, uh, but I decided to make a blade that followed suit in a lot of the Lord of the Rings stories where a, a fair and elegant noble elf uh, fell to the dark side, if you will, fell to whomever it would be, the Lord Sauron, but was corrupted and then uh, began to serve the Dark Lord. I have thought many, many hours deep into the nights myself about what would equipment, armor, and weapons look like that had once served a noble purpose or been worn or used by a noble lord or character that had then fallen uh, to the dark side. What would they look like? This will be the third scabbard that I have made that is more than just a leather sheath that has structure to it, either wood or metal or both. But in this particular instance, for this particular blade, I decided to go with something that in, in design, I'm very, very fascinated by. What I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to attempt to make a the remnants, if you will, of a scabbard that once existed as a metal and wood scabbard, but has long since lost the organic material that kept the, the blade protected. And the only thing that remains are the, the remains of the metal infrastructure or even exoskeleton, if you will. So then what I set about to do was to make three separate pieces, uh, two of them being almost ringlets, and then this last piece that you see here to capture the point, the tip of the blade. I am often fascinated by how much mental power it takes me to come up with some of these concepts on my own. I, I know, again, that there's there's a template somewhere in the world, and many templates, uh, where you could make something like this. I mean, essentially, really, it's just a pipe. Uh, but I had a really difficult time finding a pipe with the right thickness for me to actually hammer out these sections and make them elongated ovals. And this tip section, um, I just needed to make that straight out of 14 gauge steel. Recently, as I've tried to weld things together, it is dawning on me that my welds seem to be getting worse as I am uh, putting these into practice. I don't know if it's the welder. I did. I do have a very, very cheap MIG welder, uh, but it's. I think it's me, um, and, and I'm not really certain what to do about it, but uh, there's so much additional sanding and grinding work on these pieces and on pretty much everything I weld these days. Someone out there is going to remind me that I need to clean the metal much better before I weld. And before you remind me, I appreciate your reminder. 
I'm gonna give these each of these metal sections these these little accents. I could have just left them kind of plain uh, and and uniform, but I decided that if this was going to be a Dread Warlord's uh, scabbard, that it most certainly would have come from not necessarily nobility, but someone of importance, someone of class and rank and status. Therefore, these pieces of metal needed to have a little bit of, of adornment and a little bit of accent. Now, if my design idea plays out the way that I'm imagining it in my head, these sections will, will line up along the blade, interspaced pretty close to evenly, uh, and then they will be attached by some pieces of metal, which I'm about to build out here. You gotta love a good dog who just comes right on and, ooh, oh, yep, you know, you gotta love a good dog who just knows how to muzzle punch in the wrong spot, or maybe the right spot. We won't go there. So now has come the time to start the, the metal connective pieces that are gonna connect those three segments into a, a ring that is going to hang from a, a belt. Um, I decided that I wanted to try a new twist pattern. It's called the pineapple twist. It's quite a bit of prep work. It's quite a bit of actual creation work too. But the good thing about this pineapple twist, I hope that you agree when you see it, is that it has almost a skeletal look to it, which is exactly what I was going for. Something that has sort of a, a gnarled, bony, but still uniform and still may have come from something that was ornate before it was corrupted. But before I do the pineapple twist on this, that sounds like a dance, doesn't it? The pineapple twist. Before I do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to separate out the, the, the top uh, section of each one of these pieces of metal. It's going to wrap around. I'm gonna twist each of these pieces, these tines almost, uh, and then it's, they're going to, I hope, wrap around these sections of scabbard and, and in, encase the sections of scabbard, almost like a claw grabbing onto the sections of scabbard. That's the intended, the hoped effect uh, that I'm going for here. And we'll see how that plays out. That'll, that'll, that might be a little bit much for, for this blacksmith. Now on to what's called the pineapple twist. There are quite a few ways to twist ornamentally or decoratively twist metal. Normally, I just do a straight twist and I leave it like that. I might touch it up a little bit with a hammer. The pineapple twist is a twist where you're going to cut a groove lengthwise on a square rectangular piece of stock. You're gonna cut that groove lengthwise on every side. Then what you do is you come in, you twist it as you see me do here. You come out, heat it back up, flatten it, flatten each of the square sides. So it's it's now square again, but with some a little bit of accents into it. And then cut another groove lengthwise on each side, heat it back up, and then twist it uh, one half the distance of your original twist back. If that made no sense, that's because I did not describe that very well. What I like about the pineapple twist is that it is the most bony looking of all of them that I can think of. It gives these things, these they, they look like little bony claws to me after I'm done with them. And that's the effect I was going for, so I'm, I'm happy it came out that way. Now, a whole lot of fitting and eyeballing and fitting and eyeballing, because I'm getting essentially six pieces to sit and and uh, balance each other out and fit together the way that I want them to. I'm going to attach them to a ring. And of course, that ring will then hang from a, a belt. As I say a lot on my videos, I collect rings. I collect bits and bobs, brackets, all sorts of odd shapes that I think that I might use later on. So. This particular ring came from, I think that's from an, an old wagon. I think it's part of the a ringlet that would have stood off of the side of an old wagon that you could attach something to, maybe even tether a horse to. I really enjoy finding old items like this and putting them back to use, putting them back to life. Again, showcasing my amazing welds. Uh, this is just a lot of cleanup on, on the inside and on the exterior of this, but the, uh, the overall effect really, really looked the part for me. Lastly, I wanted to put something on the end of this, this piece of scabbard, something that was um, wicked, if you will, something that is aggressive or something that says, thou shalt not touch me. So I, I also keep uh, different types of little angular cutoffs, point barbs, spikes, as you see here in a little bin. And I just decided to add this little bladed section. And actually that section is not only sharp as a point, 
but it is it is a knife blade. Uh, so that end of that scabbard actually has a little bit of a knife blade. So it's not something you just run around with uh, this particular scabbard. It's definitely going to be more of a conversation piece, I think. All I did with these claws, if you will, is I just tack welded them on. I didn't do any any other uh, deeper welding. I just I didn't want to interfere with anything else. Then I put the whole scabbard into the forge, got it nice and hot, and came over here with my linseed oil to oil darken it. And set fire to myself and my shop. As I often say, oil darkening solves two things for me. It protects the metal, it gives it um, a, a nice coating, and then I come across with this sanding sponge or a steel wool pad, and I hit it, abrade it with that, and it has a very weathered, antiquated, older look. Even though the organic material in my particular design would have long since rotted away, I was gonna give this one leather band on top because it, at some point, maybe, uh, my mother might actually wanna put that for a costume uh, piece. <laughs> she might actually want to wear it. Doubtful. But still, just in case, I, I put this little leather strap on there. You know, upon review, I, I'm done, of course, with the build of this by the time of this recording. But now I think about it, I'm going to ask my mother if she would want to have that leather piece taken off. Because it's probably just going to hang on her wall or somewhere in her kitchen, you know, as you do. Uh, and if, if so, then it doesn't need that piece and it kind of interferes with the whole concept of the organic material having rotted away. So now I say that. I might, I might ask her to take it off. The tolerances were extremely tight, uh, so I needed to go ahead and make sure that I could get this thing uh, in and out quickly. It's also one of those things that as you draw it out, you gotta make sure that you are not going to cut yourself. And we will never speak of this, you'll never share this. This is lithium grease, which feels like cheating. I should have just done oil. Uh, but I wanted to put something inside that tip, especially so that if any moisture got in there, it wasn't going to uh, do anything damaging to the blade. If you practice uh, sheathings and unsheathings, and it's actually went in quite well. The great thing is this holds the blade extremely well. And here it is in all of its gruesome, dark, gnarled, bony glory. Doesn't look that horrific in the harsh light of the midday Colorado springtime sun. Thank you for joining me for this build. I'm gonna be honest, I'm very pleased the way this turned out. Probably one out of every four or five builds that I do, do I have a really high level of satisfaction? And, and that is the case with this. I think my mother's gonna love this. Okay, straight in. There's two things I want to draw attention to and reasoning in terms of design concepts and where my head is at. I have spent way too much time thinking about what a, a dread warlord long since past the grave corrupted by some dark overlord coming out of the crypt every night to do ill deeds through the dark of night. What those dark warlords, what they would wear, what they would look like, would they have armor on? What type of weapons would they have? In my mind's eye, especially with the Lord of the Rings, that the, the dark warlords and the, the, the Nine Riders, the Nazgul and Lord of the Rings would be wearing the same things they wore when they were human kings, warriors, sorcerers, walking the realms back then. The armor, their ceremonial armor, their armor of battle, all even but that armor and those weapons would have been twisted by the darkness that they now serve that is the case with this particular knife when i made this last year for my mother i i made it with the idea that this was once an elven blade and that it too what fell to the dark side if you will fell to evil and was corrupted and twisted and given these kind of a little bit more gruesome shapes the lines are still elven but the aesthetic has some dark side to it if you will so this particular scabbard follows the same exact suit it's twisted it's gnarled it's it's exposed it's open but more importantly these sections between the pieces of metal i have those open purposefully because i thought if a weapon had come long ago from the crypt and it spent all this time in and out of the crypt whatever um that the organic parts of that scabbard would have long since rotted away the wood that it may have had the leather that it may have had would have long since rotted away leaving only the metal parts behind so that's the design element i was going for i'm patting myself on the back a little bit but i i, I like that whole concept of what things look like coming out after having spent ages below ground and ages running amok below ground or even above ground the other concept that i have in, in quite a few of my dark warlord weapons and armor and it's true here too especially with this here is i thought that as weapons get twisted as armor gets twisted and corrupted its owner and the weapon or armor itself no longer needs to be user-friendly it could be edgy it could be thorny 
It could be very imposing for a mortal to touch and to use. So some of the pieces that I have built have this to them, and this one does too. This is actually quite sharp. This piece right here, not only is the tip sharp, but it's bladed right here. And my thought is this, as these things get twisted, what do they care if an enemy of the Dark Lord or the, or the Dread Warlord grabs onto them, touches them, they touch something and it cuts them. Their owners don't care if they themselves are snagged upon one of their own pieces potentially. But a lot of stories that, that I've read out there, you hear how that when the mortal touches a part of the Dread Warlord or the Dark Force, there's a cost to that. There is a physical and maybe even supernatural cost to that. That's why I design it like this. This is not something that you would want to run around with yourself necessarily, because there are parts to this that could actually potentially hurt you but that serves the purpose of its evil owner. This is definitely a rabbit hole that I've gone pretty far down, but it is something that I find interesting. I, I don't embrace the darkness very much in anything that I do, but often I think about what would be something that would give me pause, that would frighten me, that would that would send chills down my spine if I ran into. So, so that's where this design comes from. Thank you again for joining me. If you like designs and, and builds like this, check out my channel for other builds and designs that I've done that are very similar. Next week, because I got a build out of order I didn't quite finish one, you will see hopefully the release of the video of the horse set armor that I made for my gypsy banner mare. And as I say each week, thank you for joining me. God bless. Have a great week.